Hello and welcome to the Dynamite Fishing Social. You join us here in France at the Island Lake. We are fishing here over the week and bringing you all the tips, tricks and fishing action. There it is, Island Lake, 60 pounder. Long mirror from Iceland Lake. <laughs> so really, really happy with this fish. So first fish for me. Somehow got lucky again. And what an absolute perla. For a French mirror. Après trois nuits stériles. The left hand margin rod is gone. And uh, this 43 pound very spawned out mirror is the prize to show for it. Welcome to the Island Lake in France, a beautiful mature 20 acre lake where over the course of the week different sponsored anglers from across Europe will be coming together for the Dynamite European Social. The teams will consist of Christophe and Claudia, Ian and Jason, Olivier and Fabian. As well as the social, all anglers will be competing in a friendly competition for biggest fish and overall weight. Olivier, Fabian, Christophe and Claudia will gain an advantage as Ian and Jason will not be arriving until Monday as Ian is attending his son's wedding. So we just had our walk around the lake and obviously every team as well me and Christoph talking about which pack would be our favorite, uh, which we wouldn't choose and seeing the positive and negative uh, things about each pack. We, our favorite is like pack number four and five. Um, just like, it was funny because both of us immediately said like, okay, that pack, like if we have a lucky hand, we will choose that one. It's a new experience for me for not being involved in the draw or seeing the lake or being on the walk around, getting to learn anything, getting to see any, any nitty gritties. Old Blimmin Ian was at his son's wedding, so there's no better excuse as to us not being here. We went around the lake, uh, walk with the owner, Paul, and he explained us also a little bit like how the structures on uh, each spot are. So uh, yeah, we, we, I think we, we got like really good overview on uh, everything and uh, yeah for sure it's really a nice lake and I know we immediately like I didn't have many information before but I immediately saw that there will be like big challenge to catch a fish. Ladies, ladies first, ready? Yeah, yeah. we're going to do the tour, so ladies, ladies first. first. Yeah, most spiders are now And uh, who's going to pick for yours? Huh? Yeah, the French, French name. Four. <laughs> okay. Right. I'm smiling now, look. No, I am with yeah. Claudia. Oh, okay. oh right. Who, shall I do Jason? Yeah, oh, Claudia <laughs> put for Jason out for him. Yeah, that's true. Right, Jason. Who? Oh. 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 Right, you got right, the pressure on you. You got number one. So I have to say I wasn't the most lucky this time. Um, so we just had the peg draw and. Um, as a woman, I got all of these guys are gentlemen. I got the chance to yeah, choose first, and I and had, uh, yeah, I don't know, strange feeling already. I picked the number three out of four, so almost the last, which wasn't cool. Then the French uh, team was able to pick next. They got number four, so even worse. And uh, because Ian and Jason are not here, Steven picked up for them and he got the number one. And I was just looking at Chris, I was like, no way, that's not true. So, and then um, Mick got number two. So uh, when the first packs were gone, uh, we had to kind of like, yeah, choose a pack, uh, which left over, I would say. And um, I have to admit, and no, not to admit, I have to mention that it's quite fair that we did a, peg draw with Jason on FaceTime from the UK because usually, let's be honest, anglers who are not in time at the lake, the last and they get the last spot. So that's what I used to have or like what's quite common. But I have to say, fair enough, team play is here first. So we did it over the FaceTime. And um, yeah, me and Christoph choose then pack number eight, even though it's a single pack, not for a double, I think. Um, it's still a good option though. Um, but yeah, of course, I would have rather our favorite pack, but we will make the best out of it. 
With Ian and Jason coming out first in the draw, they decided on pegs four and five and will begin fishing on Monday when they arrived. Christoph and Claudia decided on peg eight, which would give them plenty of opportunities with a large bay to the right and open water to the left. Leaving the French team with pegs six and seven, which also had plenty of different options. Spending some time out in the boat, Olivier had located some likely looking spots and areas in the bay to the right of Peg 7. With time moving on and tired after a long day, Olivier placed a couple of rods with a mixture of boil eat in the bay to his right and settled in for the first night. just got our first fish. Yep. We <laughs> Christoph <one>. got it. <laughs> oh, we caught together like we are fishing as a team and uh, yeah I think a really good one for the start so we didn't wait at the fish yet but it's 20 kilo plus I think for sure and we just didn't put the fish like at the bank at all like we will do everything in the water because it's summer it's 26 degrees water so we want as less stress for the fish possible. Yes, definitely. And it looks really beautiful. So, we put already... Oh. How much is it? So, it's not 20 kilo, it's just a little bit under. Like, completely spawned on out old girl. So, yeah. <laughs> really, really happy with this fish. So, I caught the fish with the 18 mil source of after so there are quite many crayfish at the lake so I feed it with mix of pellet and with mix of mix of different size source boilies and uh, yeah how it looks this worked so the take was we set the rods yesterday what was around nine o'clock in the yeah. evening was the last one so now it's around 10 o'clock, so the rod was a little bit more than 12 hours in the water. And yeah, really happy. <laughs> really happy with the fish because how it looks, it will be quiet. Like there was like not a lot of jumping in our area. And uh, I think every fish will be so, so important. So guys, we just maybe half an hour ago released our first fish and we were just like starting talking a little bit about the bait but yeah just the second one the second fish is here I am quite surprised that uh, the fish is not tangled in the weed. So it was two, three times, but slowly I I pull her out. So yeah, how it looks, we will be able to land the fish from the bank. What is nice for the camera.
This is our second fish of the session here. Just a little bit under 20 kilo. Like old female completely spawned out. So good that both my bait tactics working well. So I just know we are on the on the right way and that we can just continue like this. So really looking forward. I hope there will be a next one. So yesterday when we arrived at the at the pack uh, which we uh, choose, uh, we made kind of more a calmer startup. Uh, usually when we are both fishing, it's kind of more faster and kind of really getting the rods out as fast as possible because you don't want to waste kind of a time but this time somehow I think it was as well like this atmosphere it's like you know arriving here after a long drive for both of us and um, with the pack draw walking around the lake everything we really took our time nice and slow making every setting everything up um, having it as well quite organized I have to say usually myself I put everything in a tent and it's kind of a mess but this time I'm really good organized yeah, like it's 100% <laughs> you are getting better and better <laughs> so that was really nice for uh, for the start to have not a rush or not feeling to be rushed and then we really took a lot of time with Christoph to be at the lake and watching the ground, the depth, the conditions. Uh, it was really interesting because usually, I'm honest, I wouldn't maybe take that much time to search for a spot, but Christoph is, that's his style. So of course, like if you fish in a team, you adapt to each other and you know, um, I took, I, I was watching him as well. He explained me as well some uh, interesting facts because sometimes I'm kind of more faster in this ways. So it was really nice for me to have the time to learn a bit about it. And it turned out that it's really not an easy lake. So if you take a good time for your preparation, I think it definitely pays off as Christoph showed us this morning. So after we prepared like BV and all other, other things on the place, uh, we took some like some time to go on a boat. Uh, there was a little bit of wind yesterday, so it was not like really easy. So that's also the, also one of the fact that we didn't like really rush to go like to sort everything like the rods quick. So I went to the lake and uh, I always try to find something what uh, other anglers cannot find. Uh, so fishing different spot than others. So uh, I found immediately out that like most of the most of the lake is covered with wheat and there you have like a couple of clean spots with uh, gravel. So uh, yeah, for sure most of the anglers will go and fish immediately on a gravel like on hard clean spot. But I was just uh, searching like some spots which are uh, like really small ones, maybe one meter big and uh, there is like uh, just like it's not like really muddy, but it's also not hard, so some, something just between. Uh, which is here maybe like the clay spots are really good, like how we found out on the end. Uh, but yeah, there is every lake has a little bit like different things what you need to search. But uh, when you found out like which spots like or which kind of uh, bottom is not, uh, is not uh, easy to find. Then you, then you know that you are on the right spot. So, first fish for me. <laughs> Amazing, I can't believe it. And they are so strong here. It's crazy to hold them proper to get them calm. Crazy, the source on a single source. And I wasn't even sure if this source is still on the hook because of the crayfish. But this is the surprise. It was on and it brought us this mega fish. 20 kilo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, really nice having first fish. Check the first fish is always the most difficult. So I think tonight we will have a big glass of wine and celebrating our first successful day at the lake.
Well, there it is, all 53 pounds of Island Lake Common. What an absolutely epic fish. You might not see me on the camera. That's because I've been behind the camera all week. I'm doing the filming, but I'm managing to slip a few rods out at night. And uh, out of all the rods I put out, this was the one I was least confident of going. And uh, yeah, just goes to show, I've just been putting out single white pop-ups, uh, some new ones that are coming out soon. Uh, with literally 10 boilies round it. It's what I did last time, fishing for a bite at a time, and it's paying off. What an absolutely epic fish. I'm absolutely over the moon with this one, and hopefully there's a few more to come. Right, having just me and Joe have just arrived after getting traffic jammed all through France. That chap over there is with me. Um, we're 48 hours late. <laughs> Brief explanation there. My very selfish son Sam decided to get married on the 1st of July. Now when this trip was booked, I did say to him, mate, there's two, two Saturdays in July you cannot get married on. He already booked it. Either that, you know, we're here now, as I say, we're 48 hours late, just arrived. There's a lot of, fit. what a lovely place. Christoph's over there. With Claudia. Is that how you say it? Claudia? Claudia. Oh, Claudia. With Claudia. Yeah. Sorry, with Claudia. Uh, they've had a couple of fish. There's lots of fish showing in front of where me and Jay are. So it's about time that one there, with a nice little pink pop up on it, wazzes its way out into the pond. So until then, I'll leave you to it. You leave me to it. There's fish to be caught. Ian and Jason now in their peg, they wasted no time getting the kit out of the van and rods onto showing fish. With multiple fish showing in close, they both decided on the quiet approach with no boats and small leads to see if they could pick up an early fish. Right, we've given it two hours with the rods in the water, it the and it's ironic, you know, these, these French people say, go out of France, you're going to bag up, right? Some lakes are like that, others aren't. I was warned here, as soon as we put them, English, three Ronnies on their heads, ain't seen a fish since, so we've reeled them in now. We're going to sort them out in about an hour. We've come round to see um, Christophe and Claudia. Claudia? Claudia? Steve? Claudia. 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 Come around to see and have a social with the guys for an hour. We've seen the other guys next door, Michael and that. Um, and it's that time of day. Five past four, by about six o'clock, we'll have all the rods in. We found a few spots in front of us, and then we'll uh, then really the trip begins. I really was hoping we'd take an early one. Again, we were 48 hours late, and the, and the guys in this peg event. They're catching up today. <laughs> We've got a bit of catching up to do. Well, back on the rods. And you know what? I've got an RT4 sitting over there on the ground. But not on a boat, what else? And we've got a great big green rowing boat. And I'm going to try, because I'm so stubborn, and most times when I go to France, they're on venues of this size, not massive venues to be fair. So I'm going to try and do it a little bit of English fishing. Now, this time tomorrow, that may or may not have all changed. But to start off with, I am going to do a little bit of spawning clipping up. I found a nice spot in line with Chris's swim, about 18 something wraps. The boilie rod on the left, I'm going to have to find an area because I've, I've only covered this area so far with the rod. But yeah, without further ado, I'm going to stick about a dozen of these out there on the 18. And a couple of rods on it for tonight, having wrapped it up, which is 
what most people don't do. So, I'm not going to clonk around with a big plastic green boat, I'm going to clonk around with a small white, what are they called? Wolf. Spod. It's a spod, isn't it? Yeah. It's a spider spod. <laughs> I've just used the throwing, uh, the throwing stick, 20 mil complex tea, soaked in our shrimp uh, liquid, then covered in, in crushed dried imp. Works everywhere else, so why wouldn't it work here? Three rods are in the water now, I've got two at 18 wraps towards Chris's swim, one at 13 in a deeper channel here. Um, it feels three or f good three or four foot deeper. They're all on complex T, they're all on complex T pop-ups. Now I have been warned that the craze can be a bit of a problem, but we're, I've got braid on, so they will, it's like a telephone line, isn't it? When it's going beep, 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 beep. Oh no, I've got a problem. Till then, I'm gonna go for the first 24 hours with me boily, my complex T pop-ups, my spotting, and my stringer. Why not? English daily miley. Um, and that's it, we haven't seen anything for hours now. There was loads of earlier, like I said, when I was over with Chris and that. Um, and they all petered away, typically when you cast out. We've done three rods in the area. Jane looks a couple off to the left here, and that was it. Boom, they stopped. It's quite a pressured lake, but who knows? We've got the night ahead of us. We've got four. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Five nights ahead of us, okay? So without further ado, I'm going to leave them as they are. The bucket's there, 20 mil complex tea. There's a little hut there where I'm going to put the kettle on and put myself a pie in the oven. See you later. fish no longer showing, Jason decided to take to the boat and investigate his swim. Oh, there it is, Island Lake, 60 pounder, absolutely over the moon. As I said, I'm only fishing the night, running around in the day, filming everyone else. It's day bites primarily, but I'm managing to work something out. And oh, what a fish. You've, you've definitely worked it out. I mean, you've done well, mate. Like, two, two in the night. Oh, that is one impressive fish. Spawned out 60 pounder. Mick's had it before at 67 plus. Absolutely, look at the paddle on that fish. 60 pounder over the moon. Oh, come on. So guys, to give you a little update, yesterday Ian and Jason arrived. It was really nice to see them and have a little chat with them. But so far the day was really quiet. We had quite a lot of rain in the morning. So usually the rain brings the car, but in this lake it doesn't. It made it probably more quiet. Maybe as well of the hustle from Ian and Jason. So there's a movement in the lake. Um, so far it was yeah, not so uh, active the fish, you didn't hear or see any fish jumping. But luckily in the evening I could manage to get a smaller carp out, so uh, still got a fish out. But uh, yeah, of course we hope for a little bit more action, but let's see how the next days will go. So I just wanted to show you which kind of rigs I am using here at the Iceland Lake in France. So we know that uh, here are problems the crayfish. Uh, so, lots of wheat in the water, also the structure is crazy, uh, so we had like stones or I would say like little rocks, then we had like a really really deep mud 
and in between there is also clay. Uh, so because I am fishing on clay or on a, like really not a deep mud, uh, I am using the wafters. Uh, so this is one of my favorite rigs or like presentations in the past. Uh, two 15 mil uh, wafters or these were like the monster tiger nuts, the 18 mil source wafter, uh, which is bigger. Uh, this presentation is like really simple. Also, you all know, like my rigs are so simple. The most important is the sharp hook. So here is the hook link, which is coated. Uh, I put here like the coat down. So it's just simple, easy, here is soft, there is like stiff, put the lead in between and uh, yeah, that's really simple but very effective rig. So in the last 24 hours we caught like two fish. I caught one really small one and Claudia had a nice common 13 kilo. So the reason that the, the fishing is quite slow uh, or really slow, uh, I think the full moon time uh, which is really good, but just 24 hour, 24 hours around the full moon. I don't have like really good experience with this, and uh, I hope is this. And the second reason is for sure because Sian and uh, Jason arrived yesterday, and <laughs> the, before they arrived here, uh, the fish were jumping only on that spot. What was like really crazy and somehow. Like everyone at the lake was a little bit like, mm, they, they couldn't come really the first day because we, we really got the feeling like most of the fish was staying there and covered somehow. And we were expecting that the fish will split, like that they will move around the lake immediately. But uh, yeah, we didn't see like really fish jumping in the last 24 hours like nowhere so they all also didn't caught nothing so what we expected that there will be like one or two fish immediately so yeah it's 100 percent like a tricky lake uh, not an easy one so i'm really happy that in the first two days uh, we caught like five fish and uh, yeah we will just follow this way and i think the fish will come back Good afternoon. Nothing to report yet from me and my, mine and Jason's camp, actually, or Jason and I. Anyway, nothing to report yet. The fish did move off us yesterday, and that, that's not uh, an excuse. The fact is, they did move down the lake. Steve had a big one yesterday evening, but as they say, that is Steve's story, not ours. Today, I mean, the crayfish are horrendous, uh, and Paul, the owner, would quite happily tell you that because he's quite an honest guy. They are doing your baits within probably an hour of them being in the water. So it's a constant um, battle of recasting, rebaiting. So it is making it more difficult than it normally would do here. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm going to move one rod later when, when the wind drops off. I've, I've stayed out of the boat so far. Steve's doing them in the boat. He's had a couple of fish. Chris is doing it in the boat. So it would it makes sense to have a little go at that. I'm going to keep one on the, the spotted area, English styly miley, like, like I said yesterday. I've, I've heard a couple in the mouth of this bay to my right, so I'm going to be casting that one. 50 boilies, 18 wraps, spot a few boilies, and later on I'll go out in the boat and uh, take my chances with, you are allowed tigers as hook baits. So I'm going to put double tiger on a rig, drop it down with probably 50 or 100 boilies right on top of it. They'll eat the boilies, hopefully, which will attract a carp, and um, leave my tiger nuts alone, my naked nuts. So that's the plan for later today. Right, I've heard a couple in this little bay to my right, so it's worth, if, if nothing else, just a couple of hours. I've clipped it. There was a bit of sort of milked up water near the other side. Bang. Oh, look at that. Right. 
Right, two rods are in, one in the bay, as you've just seen pinging a load of ballies around it, 15 millers, and one, I'm staying with that 18 wrap. I don't think many people do that. I did say this yesterday. No, I don't think, I think in fact, Paul the owner said he hadn't seen anyone spotted on here for like three years. That doesn't instill a lot of faith in me, but being different, and that's how I would do it in, on any other lake or in England. So that's out there, that's out there. I'm gonna stick half a dozen spoms on top of it in a minute. Wait for the wind to drop later. I really want to get a rod. There's a bar runs off the peak of these, these reeds, which is about 90 yards out. Um, I did have a little skip round the area in a boat and I couldn't, it was a bit murky, which might be good because there might be fish there, but I couldn't see where I was putting the bait. So I'm going to leave it another hour or two. Hopefully the wind will drop. Get that bait in place. Now, if I can't get out of the later because the wind and the rain, because we are due that, I'll put it on the 18 wrap spot again, just for tonight because there's bait there. So, um, but hopefully we get it out there and bring a great big hippo. So guys, <laughs> there is 24 hours for us, a little bit less than 24 hours without a take. And yeah, I was in situation <laughs> when I was not sure if I keep the rods without touching, or I changed the rod, like any of the rods. And the rod which was the longest in the water, like God, got a take and it's a <laughs> really nice fish. 25.1 kilo. What a nice looking fish from Iceland Lake. What a nice mirror. On two dumbbells, monster tiger not 15 mil, just over the moon. So what is really important, especially in the summertime, that we keep the fish in the sling for a couple of minutes, like they're in a clean water, so that they can rest like really nice. And you see that fish staying really well, strong, prepared to go back. So. One more time. What a, what a beauty from Iceland Lake. So happy. So happy. So, update for morning two for me and Ian. The left hand margin rod is gone. And uh, this 43 pound, very spawned out mirror is the prize to show for it. Uh, moved the rod yesterday to areas that I felt more confident in. This one being on the entrance to a bay. And uh, yeah, six o'clock this morning, away she went. It's very, very spawned out, but a lovely one and welcomed for day of morning, day of morning two, sorry. It was caught on a new crab and krill hardened hook bait with a white pop-up over the top, fished on a snowman. So hopefully we can build on that. And yeah, pleased to get off the mark.